This is Making Comics 101, Issue 5, Creating Characters. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where together we are going to create some awesome comics because this is Making Comics 101. This is Issue 5 where we're going to talk all about character. So what's involved in creating a character? Well, I'm gonna break this down into two sections. The first one is going to be the development, which is more the writing part of the character, and, and then we'll get into the visual aspects of the character. So when it comes to character development, there's some important things we need to consider. What motivates your character? What, what, there, there's probably something missing in your character's life. When you're thinking about character, you want to ask yourself, what do they care about? What are their wants and needs? They're, those are two very distinctive things because the want is something that's more external and the need is something that's a little more internal. It's important to understand that those things can change throughout the course of, a, of the story or maybe it's, it's always there but maybe the character doesn't even really know what they need. Uh, they have that want, but they, they, they really, it takes them a while to discover what they need. A terrific example of this, one of my favorite characters with a fantastic character arc, uh, would be uh, Prince Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, Zuko has, he, he has a divine goal. Prince Zuko's goal in the story is to become Fire Lord, but it's more than that. It's he needs to redeem himself in his father's eyes. He needs to prove himself to his father and then become a great Fire Lord. And much of that has to do with tradition and honor and all these things. And through the course of the story, he achieves his goal. He eventually does become the Fire Lord, but for different reasons than what he set out to. And there's just a fantastic journey involved of what happens to him along the way where he realizes that the reasoning for what he wanted to become was flawed and he found a different way, a better way, and it served the story much better and again, it just created this fantastic character. Now, different characters in your story can have different goals and what's important to one character may not matter at all to another character, but each character, probably, if they are a main character, they, you know, you could also have side characters, and we'll get into that as well. They might not be as fleshed out. Uh, they may serve other purposes within your story. But as far as the main characters, each one of them should have a desire and a goal, a want and a need. Once we know those wants and needs, we can move on and start fleshing out our characters even more. Uh, and that would be adding, you know, character traits, their relationship with others, but you should always be thinking about the emotion of your character. Is what kind what what is the, you know what kind of personality trait best sums them up? And uh, people are complex, and there there can be a variety of these different things. But but for the purposes of our story, and you know, I think you want to start with one main character trait, and you, then you can kind of branch out and and differentiate a, a, you know here and there. So what kind of person is your character? Is he happy-go-lucky? Is she a curmudgeon? Uh, are they curious? Are they afraid of change? Is it someone who's apathetic or somebody who's very ambitious? They could be shy, they could be boisterous. There's so many different ways to kind of sum up our character. And once we have that, then we can move on and add all, you know, all the, the complexities of our character. So we have our main character traits, but what about their relationship with others? And, I, you know, to sum this out, I'm going to pick a, a pretty kind of a basic example, but I think it's a really good example, and that would be SpongeBob SquarePants. So when we think of SpongeBob, he's, you know, he's, he's fun to be around, he wants to make everyone happy, he's optimistic, and his foil, which would be Squidward, is, you know, he's... He's just, you know, he's just kind of humdrum. He does he wants to be left alone. He he doesn't want anything to do with SpongeBob. And SpongeBob's goal is, is being to make everyone's happy, happy and have fun. He's constantly trying to trying to bring Squidward into this and cheer him up and things and he has a, he doesn't want anything to do with it. So those two uh, you know, they're diametrically opposed. They both want the exact opposite goals. 
and that creates an interesting dynamic in their relationship. These two aren't going to get along. Well, one of them thinks they're get, get along fine. The other, one, the other one, again, he's just he's, he's just not into it. There we have our you know our different personalities, and we can we can branch those off into all the different characters. And what think about what does one character feel about the other? And different characters may feel differently about di about the other characters in our story. Patrick, he's kind of he's kind of along for the ride. He's not as uh, gung ho about about everything as SpongeBob, but but he's willing to go with it and everything. And he can kind of see through where it's it's almost like SpongeBob's kind of blind to to kind of Squidward's personality and what he really cares about. I think I think Patrick's a little more in tune to that. He's not he's probably not so as interested in making Squidward happy as SpongeBob. And then you've got Mr. Krabs. He's very much uh, interested in himself and earning money and everything. Any other character that comes into his life, how do they fit into that? How do they fit into his goals of, of earning money and serving his selfish needs? Based on that, we can kind of look at what how all these different characters interact. Some characters will like others. Some characters will like one person and the other character won't. There, but that's that's a good dynamic to have. So when you get these characters in a group, it creates an interesting dynamic. One of the things you want to do is put you in the reader's shoes and ask yourself why should they care about this particular character? They need to be able to sympathize with or relate to that character. And whatever that character's goal is, it doesn't have to be important to the reader. It only has to be important that we want that character to achieve that goal. A good example of this for me personally would be like Rocky. So Rocky Balboa, his goal is to be a heavyweight champion. Now, me personally, I'm, I'm really not that much of a boxing fan. I'm just, this, I, I don't watch a lot of boxing matches. I don't know a lot about it, but I love that movie. And the reason is because I can empathize with that character. I want Rocky to achieve his goals because I care about him, because I know his story and his struggle and everything. And so, you know, when he eventually does, which, spoiler alert, doesn't happen in the first film, <laughs> but, 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 that, but that's okay, because that goes back to the wants and needs. What Rocky wants and what he actually needs and what he actually gets are two different, different things. So at the end of the first arc in his story, when he discovers, he, 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 when he accomplishes his, his inner need, um, I'm very happy for him. And when later he eventually accomplishes his original want, I'm, I'm happy again. Even though I, you know, personally, I, I have no desire to be a heavyweight champion. That's not a goal of mine. But I care for that character enough to want him to accomplish that. Now, each story is different, and every story has a number of, or could have a number of different character archetypes. Of course, we have our protagonist, the person that we want to follow along the, the, the journey with. And we have the antagonist, as I mentioned, usually those two have the opposite goals. But there are other character archetypes that can inhabit our story. For instance, uh, a, a love interest. And the love interest could be, it could that could also be a goal. That could be the object of our main character's desire to either rescue or form a relationship with or whatever. And it can go even more in depth. I mean, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this quest to rescue the princess or something like that. Each of those characters can have their own ambitions, their own goals, and their own desire. We may introduce like bit players that come into our story either to add some exposition or for comic relief or you know just serve a certain purpose but they may not really uh, have anything to do with the actual plot of our story. Our protagonist or a hero may have allies that help them accomplish their own goal either if they're there to serve the same goal or maybe they have their own reasonings for helping our characters out. You go back to Star Wars Han Solo is an ally character who originally he's just there for the money. So they, him and Luke Skywalker have very different goals, but they follow the same path and eventually everything lines up and in in a perfect scenario, they will both get what they wanted out of that. Of course, with Han Solo, again, we, 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 we go back to the wants and needs things and that, that stuff can all change. Uh, in addition to that, uh, another example, speaking of Star Wars, would be our mentor character. Somebody like an Obi-Wan or later Yoda or a character like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings who is there to teach and mentor Frodo along and help him along on his journey. And there's a lot of other character types that I, I won't get too much in depth into, but I do have, you know, there there is information out there. It, it, Joseph Campbell 
has the, the hero's journey. It, it talks about how they inter they're introduced to these different characters or Dan Harmon's story circles. Uh, you, you know, they talk about the Herald, the trickster, the shapeshifter, the guardian, the, the shadow villains, all this kind of stuff. So uh, you can look more into that. And I also have some some tools. Uh, I, I don't know if it's in the, in the free version of my Comic Maker Starter Kit, but there's definitely some of that stuff in the uh, Comic Maker Toolkit, or you can look that stuff up online. So we have all these different characters that help populate our story. But you know how we write for them. How do we how do we know what they're going to say or how they're going to act and everything? As far as what they're going to say, we're going to get. I'm going to get more into dialogue in a first future episode. We'll have one uh, episode just dedicated to dialogue, so we won't get into that as much. But just keep in mind people that you know or people that you observe in real life, and it, how that person maybe some of that person's personality could be transitioned into one of your characters. How would that person that real life person react? Or you can take a number of different people. And kind of combine them and and kind of figure out uh, you know build their personality off of that and and then kind of translate that into your story characters okay so we have discussed the development of our characters but what about the visual look of our characters let's let's talk a little bit about design what's unique about our characters why do they look the way they do what are their interests are they into music are they into art are they into sports that's probably going to reflect the way that they look. We want to consider their appearance, their age, their gender, all this stuff, their body language, their posture, clothing. That could be depending on their environment. Is it warm where they are? Is it cold where they are? Where they are? Their hairstyle, their their grooming habits. Uh, maybe they've got weapons or some other accoutrement. Uh, how do they how do they carry themselves? Maybe every time you see them, they've got a cup of coffee with them. Or, you know, you could even spin that. Like uh, in uh, Mall Rats, the character Brody, he was always carrying around this little Dixie cup. Through most of the movie, he had this little Dixie cup, which was just kind of ridiculous because how long does it take you to drink something out of a Dixie cup? But he's carrying it around. And that was just kind of a fun little quirk. So quirks like that really make for interesting character. When we look at something that we haven't seen before, we're like... Well, that's kind of weird. Why does that guy have a Dixie cup? But that sort of makes that character, that's sort of an endearing character trait for that, that particular person. Now, when we're doing the actual visual design of our characters, we want to think about proportions of our characters. Now, I have a few templates in the Comic Maker Starter Kit, which of course, again, is free to download. You go to my website, but I've got a, uh, a male and female character design template. I know these are blue lines, so they're a little hard to see, uh, but this can kind of help you, and we'll probably do an exercise in the bonus this episode where we actually uh, you know just actually design a character but these are here for your use those will help you out in general the average character is about seven and a half heads tall uh, as far as superhero comics uh, you probably want to go up to like eight heads tall um, and uh, so or it could be even taller I mean if you've got somebody like the Hulk but but that all deals with proportions and the visual look of your character if you want him super heroic or her super heroic maybe they're more muscular more statuesque uh, so, or if they're, you know, if they're sort of either like a, a sidekick or, uh, again, comic relief or it's just different characters are going to have different looks to them. Different, you know, they may, they may stand, they may kind of slouch down and maybe standing upright or whatever. And those are some things we want to think about when coming up with the visual design of our characters. Now, I don't want you to get ahead of yourself. I mean, designing a really cool character, adding all the detail, the little minutia and, all this stuff is really fun to do, but before you do that, I want you to consider the outline of your character or the silhouette of your character. How does that character look? If you were to take all the details out and just create that silhouette of that character, is it going to be recognizable? Is it going to be interesting? And that's really where you should start off. A perfect example would be Batman. Look at the silhouette of Batman. He's got that iconic, he's got the cow with the with the bat ears, the flowing cape with the scalp ends around it. You can you can look at that silhouette and say, hey, that's Batman. But I try to do that, you know, even with my own characters. And even though in my story, Young and the Dead, it's just kids. These aren't superheroes. They don't have fantastic costumes. They're just wearing regular clothes. But 
I did, like even with the logo, you can kind of see each character, whether it's their height or sort of their hairstyle or if a character's wearing a long coat um, or just kind of what they carry around with them, whether it's a hockey stick or whatever. Um, I try to kind of separate those characters and it can be a little difficult when you are dealing with just sort of average everyday characters, but think about ways to separate them from everyone else. So when you do set them up in a silhouette, you can, you can see the difference between them. And then once you have a striking silhouette, then you can start adding in all the little details. With Batman, you can add the utility belt and you know the, the, his emblem and all that kind of stuff. And another thing you want to consider uh, once you start getting past that detail and everything, uh, and we get into the, the color schemes of our characters. The color scheme can be very important when designing our characters. And you want to think, you want to know things like color theory and stuff like that. For instance, uh, the Incredible Hulk. That green and that purple really complement each other. And you see that in a lot of characters with that color scheme. The Green Goblin's got the same color scheme. And you can compare that to Spider-Man with the blue and red that the green and purple and the blue or red are 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 very different. So when you have the ar the arch villain is uh, is going to be quite you know probably the opposite color scheme as say the hero, and that could be with Batman with the grays and the blues and Joker who's also got the the green and the purple. So um, you know think about that. The, the colors that work good together, you know, like like blues and oranges and and again green and purples and 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 so you want to you want to learn a little bit about color theory but you don't always have to go that way um when i when i design i'll do design a character in the bonus episode and and we'll kind of figure out a color scheme for that particular character you can look at uh look at other characters that already exist in comics or uh, you know honestly i'm not a huge sports fan but if you want to look how at colors that go well together just look at sports teams and the color schemes that they use and you can kind of borrow those and and Use those for your character. And colors can help differentiate your characters, make them, separate them from other characters, or you can use the same color scheme on certain characters to kind of show that they're part of a group. The Fantastic Four, they usually all wear that same blue and black and white uniform, or like the X-Men with the black and yellow. And all teams don't have to have that. A team like the Avengers, they don't all wear the same costume, but they are part of a team. So these are just some things that you want to consider on you know introducing color into your character. Now, we can go on and on. There's so many different aspects of this. And of course, like I said, this is something that could become a larger discussion either in the comment section or you can do further research. But uh, hopefully I've laid out enough information for you to sort of get started on creating your characters. Again, if you have questions, something that I didn't cover, let me know. If it's something that I, I look at and I say, wow, man, I should have I mentioned that. Maybe I'll add that in the bonus episode. We'll have some ancillary material or something like that. We'll see. But I just wanted to get kind of get the basics out there for you guys so you can get started creating characters and uh, with that that's probably all I have to talk about as far as creating characters on this episode but we're not done we've got a lot more episodes to go we're gonna get into scripting next I believe and uh, yeah so thanks for watching you know hit me up in the comment section if you're not already subscribed subscribe so you can watch the you'll know when the and hit that bell so you know when the rest of these episodes are are coming out and yeah I will see you guys later that is all Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surpworks on social media, and now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to Surpworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.